I'm Nick Mattingly, I'm the show's director at the RHS. The event attracts 166,000 visitors throughout the course of the week. Um, we also have 5,000 visitors that come for the gala, uh, which is our evening event on the Monday. And, and that then doesn't include the press that we, we have that come through for the preview event as well. Contractors, I think it runs into the multiple thousands. So across all of the other shows, uh, there's Hampton Court, there's Chatsworth House and Towson Park. Uh, there's multiple contractors that move between them and obviously they attract their own audience but we would probably attract about a half a million to 600,000 visitors to those shows this year. The contractors for the event, it's really horses for courses but there's some that go and there's regulars that move between shows uh, and we do try and get bulk buy between the events and uh, it makes sense for a, a, an organisation of our size uh, but uh, there's others that will come and go and also we try and draw on the local uh, talent as well, so it's not just specific to the, the geography. For the new contractors, uh, we've tried to innovate in the areas where historically the RHS, I, th I think, have needed a shake-up. So the, the registration side is something that we've had to concentrate on. Uh, accreditation, um, it's really down to our security and revenue protection. There's been a, a bit more of a concentration on securing events and ticketing, and so those two, for me, have gone hand in hand. So there's been a wholesale review in terms of how we do our ticketing, uh, coupled then with the accreditation side for our contractors and registration generally across all of the shows. Um, there's other areas that we're exploring at the moment in terms of the digital area. Um, the, again, the RHS shows have been around for a long time, and so things have been done the same way over and over. Uh, we've got an opportunity with the digital area to do more. Uh, we're doing virtual reality this year for the first time, working with Bam Nuttall. Uh, and that will extend, there's other stuff that we're looking at doing and actually we're looking at a, a, a school's garden competition doing a virtual reality competition as well. So it's stuff that's uh, not been done by the RHS before but it's giving us an area where we can grow. Um, and then also just uh, we're looking at emerging markets really, the, sort of the, the things that we can do better differently, uh, whether that's through utility usage, power, water, uh, ethernet, etc. Introducing virtual reality to the shows is geared, it's trying to attract a new audience. Our demographic is a somewhat ageing population, but so, so we're trying to invite younger audiences to the shows and that is happening naturally, but we're, we're trying to also through our campaign for school gardening, which is now reaching out, I forget, it's like 27,000 schools that are participating. So it's actually a natural evolution of that and that's very much the sphere, the, the, they're, they're gamers, they're, they, they work in the virtual space already and nobody's doing garden designs in virtual reality really so we're trying to introduce that and it's a category of garden that we can do it could be a, a garden that's designed virtual reality from a real world space it can then be built in a real world environment in a show and then maybe a winning garden goes forward and it is uh, used in real world space again I think the role virtual reality plays is multifaceted so it's, it enables us to bring new content to the shows where we've not done it before and it engages with a new audience uh, but yes, it's that access thing. So Chelsea Flower Show is a sellout show. Quite a few people will be disappointed that you can't come. So actually having virtual reality renders of the gardens, being able to do 360 tours, uh, will enable other people to be able to see the show online. But we will look at doing that for the other shows as well. Um, but it, it takes it to a, a different level really uh, and, and an engagement level that we haven't had before. This is the first year we've worked with D2I. It's been a wholesale shake-up of our accreditation side of things. Uh, we started the process last year and it, we had, had an unfortunate situation where we had a pass system that was operating with wristbands. They weren't personalised so the very first thing that we've achieved with the D2I is that the passes are now entirely personalised to the person using it. They can't be swapped between individuals and that's where the revenue protections come in as well. So the, the, the pass system is now exactly that. Um, and then we get the data on the individuals, uh, but it also allows us to monitor the gates, the pressure on the gates with the, uh, the exhibitors coming and going. It allows us to have access timings. It's reduced the number of passes down to a single point, rather, whereas previously there was multiple passes being given out to people. Um, so it's a, a huge benefit of that. Uh, and then we're looking to the future as well because of the sort of uh, passporting that enables you to do once you're registered and you've got individuals you've registered with the system, then, then still embedded on the system. So hoping across multiple shows and multiple years. So there's a benefit in that as well. I'm Matt Blaine, Managing Director of D2I Systems. D2I have uh, partnered with RHS to deliver a, a security system that, that manages their access control 
from anything from the day-to-day -day gates for public visitors to uh, the high-level security access control on, on Monday when they have their very prestigious gala dinner uh, and D2I Systems is, is responsible for putting the software in place that manages people being in the right place at the right time or making sure that people aren't in the wrong place at the wrong time, which tracks all the way back through RHS to the Metropolitan Police uh, so that they can monitor people toing and froing from different areas and making sure that it's being uh, controlled. The relationship came about really, they were looking for a solution to a kind of problem that, that had been growing over the years on, on how to actually control with such a big prestigious event and everyone wanting to be here. They were looking for a technology solution on, on how to control that. Um, so that relationship started with, with them kind of seeing what we already did in the industry with, with uh, customers such as Farnborough Air Show. Um, they saw that model uh, and very much saw that that could work within their environment. Um, as a technology company, we kind of identify with different event models, but then find ourselves always kind of tweaking and developing to make sure that the, the technology fits like a glove. Um, so although the model at Farnborough uh, appeared to be a simple uh, shift, uh, there was a lot of work on the relationship and the systems to actually make this work for, for not just RHS but the security teams behind it. D2I systems on the build-up of a show like Chelsea uh, with the kind of access controls is, is dealing with up to 15,000 um, contractors and exhibitors. Uh, and then on the prestigious Monday that is uh, Royal, Royal Family, it's, it's, it's down to uh, smaller groups, but very focused on, on how that tight that security is and how the systems work. So then uh, the day-to-day, -day, uh, consumer days, public days, up to 150,000, all going through that access control system and reporting back to RHS and the Metropolitan Police so that they know uh, what's going on at any given time. So the key benefit um, when we approach multiple shows with the likes of RHS is that with the centralised database, it's based on a contact rather than on silos of shows. So the contractor working here or an exhibitor working here um, can easily transfer to other shows. So um, moving from Chelsea to Chatsworth or Cardiff or, or Tatton, um, you don't need to repeat the process. And the centralisation of the data instead of um, creating new databases is enhancing the profile of, of your customers, of your contractors. So over, over multiple shows, over multiple years, you start to see a picture on that profile and that helps in security analysis, data analysis from a business point of view, uh, financial analysis on, on loyalty and on the brand. So it, it can kind of be used in multiple different ways. Um, and one of the key things to start with RHS was the security, is being able to shift people from site to site without having to kind of go through that security rigmarole again, but also then lends itself in a, in a after doing multiple um, multiple cycles, is it lends itself to then intelligence on your own business. A um, massive focal point going forward is um, if you kind of don't know numbers of people or types of people that are at the event at any given time and the responses and, and as we heard on the news of things like Manchester where they sent 60 ambulances, um, those assessments can be quickly done if, if people actually know the demographics of what's going on. So kind of tracking all of that information and being able to present that quickly and efficiently to a control centre as uh, a show like this means that they can make decisions quite quickly should something happen. Uh, and without that information, it's more guesswork than it is um, kind of proactive responses. And now we've mastered capturing the data and the shape of how that data should sit, you can then start to bolt other things in that will enhance that. So things like facial recognition assigned to a person that is roaming around and bolting that into CCTV is where D2I certainly see a, a, a future in kind of linking that data and those people um, to other technologies within the event to be able to track people uh, for whatever purpose, security or just to kind of maybe hotspot where, where certain types of people are actually uh, moving around the site. Things that are coming onto the horizon for us really, I think it's down to the demographic of our shows and that's what we need to be led by and the customer experience. Uh, so it's being subtle with that. So if there's a technology there that will provide us to be able to do something differently and uh, more efficiently, then yes. Yeah. So if that is facial recognition, we'll, we'll look at it for sure. Some more innovation that we're thinking about. So we're, it's in the ticketing area really and how we treat with our members. Um, we've got nearly 500,000 members with the RHS. So what we're looking at doing is trying to provide their membership card uh, and show tickets is one resource so that when somebody goes online and they go to buy through C-Tickets, for example, 
their tickets are loaded onto their membership card and then the membership card can be used to enter to enter the show but then it maybe also is a payment card or a loyalty card as well and so that's a, an area that we're definitely looking at and we'll approach cautiously but uh, progressively over the next couple of years.